Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel GoGeeko. This is the part 2 of total 3 videos I have created related to going from classic ETL to modern cloud and big data technologies. Again, I just put in that slide just to emphasize how important data and related technologies are. Again, this is mainly intended for ETL, resources, developers, analysts, data analysts, SQL developers, testers who does testing with data. This is part two and I'm focusing mainly on cloud, what and how you can get into cloud and big data. So mainly what products within cloud you need to learn. And before I start this, just bear with me here when I cover what to learn, because in back of your mind you may be thinking how can i learn all this for that wait for next few slides in this video and also remember at the end it's going to be you who will make that effort to learn this video provides what and how and from where you can learn so don't get overwhelmed or get too excited where i can learn all that just wait for my next few slides so this is must you need to know that when you wanted to get into cloud why cloud computing what is cloud computing who provides cloud solutions currently mainly there are three providers amazon microsoft google what is compute versus storage what are basics of ec2 vpc auto scaling what are these concepts and very high level basics of how billing is done in cloud because you are a etl developer or a etl analyst you really don't need to worry about billing but it's good to know why these things are important because when people talk about these cloud products or services then you can understand overall situation way better and you can respond with confidence and bring right solution to the table what else you need to learn is AWS s3 this is must when you deal with data that's where the data will usually land s3 is nothing but an object storage for files think of that as directories or folders in your unix spark and the files comes there lands there and then get processed that's what s3 does in cloud in azure it's called blob storage you also need to learn about file formats what are parquet and snap this is very important because cloud is auto scalable you can keep scaling you can keep adding space and you will get charged for that so you need to figure out ways how to compress files how to save on space and how to perform better so parquet and snappy are the most important file formats actually parquet is the file format and snappy is a compression technique the other good to know product is aws glue it's kind of etl in the cloud it is a metadata aware meaning file gets copied and you can actually start querying the data in those files as soon as the file lands in your s3 directory or in s3 bucket actually directly trees are kind of called buckets in s3 so you don't need to load the data so glued handles that so it's a pretty powerful tool similarly in azure you have data catalog and data factory redshift that's basically a relational database like oracle sql server teradata the only difference is it's massively parallel processing I don't think you need to learn that. You already know SQL, so that's good enough. AWS, Lambda, or Azure Functions, these are good to know also because you don't need to buy compute if you do these serverless and trigger-based computing. For example, you can create a Lambda function that as soon as a file lands in S3 bucket, then transform gender field, standardize gender field, and load that into a Hiver Redshift table. And also after loading, move file to archive bucket it. Now imagine you're not using any server or I should say you're not paying for any server which is kind of an EC2 machine in AWS and you're still getting your work done. Now because you're in big data or data related field you need to know what EMR or Elastic MapReduce is not in detail but very high level. Similarly in Azure you can learn Databricks, Hadoop on cloud. This is basically what it is and do check out my part 3 video on this topic because I will be covering more on Hadoop. 
Hadoop there or big data. One important point to note here is Azure Databricks is a first party Microsoft service, unlike third party on AWS platform. So if you go with Databricks, it may be a better choice to go with Azure because it's tightly integrated with other Azure services. It works great with AWS also, so don't get me wrong there. Power BI, I just wrote for Azure because Power BI is very powerful analytical BI platform on Azure and it's tightly integrated with other Azure products and services. So I would say if you are a BI developer or a leader analyst, that is something which you should learn. Now the other important concepts, and it's mainly a theory in big data and cloud, is how data usually flows. So the data usually flows um, in zones and again you can use any terminology you wanted to use but this is very common and general. Imagine like your staging database or a data warehouse in a data warehousing project. I'm sure you remember this data flow staging database to data warehouse to OLAP cube. I'm sure you have encountered this uh, data flow. So it's the same concept and in big data or cloud that's how usually the data flows. So the data can come from outside places. It could be anything. It usually goes to transient zone or a temp zone. Then from there it goes to raw zone or staging zone. And then finally it goes to curated zone. In some cases people can create analytics sandbox where people can perform their analytics work and queries. And here is another picture. So data is going from transient zone to raw to trusted or refined zone. Again, you can come up with whatever terminology you wanted to use. What I have seen from my experience, raw zone, refined zone, curated zone, these are very common names in cloud and big data lakes. Now, what are the resources you can learn all these from? So first of all, everything thing is available online and it's free so start digging as data is the new oil YouTube is new Google see things in real versus reading articles on Google if you are comfortable reading then definitely use Google now check out my videos also I will be posting more videos on these topics like Parquet, Snappy which I talked about a lot of products related to AWS Clue and other topics also so and do subscribe to my GoKiko YouTube channel for notifications when I post more information and relevant content. I also recommend to do these certifications. These are basics and are very easy. So if you just spend a little bit of time, then you will be able to pass them. AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner, Microsoft Azure Fundamentals. Later on, it will be a good idea if you wanted to do a big data specialty certification. So how can you get into cloud and big data? So I just wanted to say, people say, get out of your comfort zone and do that and do this extra uh, effort. If you can do that, that's great. But if you can, and if you may have learned from your experience that you have so many things going on in life, like everyone else, I would just say, just be in your comfort zone, right? Just 15 to 30 minutes every single day five days a week without failing. If you can do that, then it's so easy. Within a month, you will learn so much. Look for opportunities within your organization, department. Proactively take some extra responsibilities. And again, it's a matter of spending 15, 20, 30 minutes every day. Good to get into cloud projects with big data tools like Informatica BDM, Big Data Manager, Talent. If you know IDQ, then you almost know BDM and you should definitely spend a couple of more hours to learn BDM. That will be a very quick transition for you. You just need to learn few settings related to Hadoop cluster. Check out my IDQ or other IDQ videos on YouTube if you need help in learning IDQ. Use this presentation to explore these specific topics and champion them. Once you get into cloud and big data, then you will find your own advanced path in this field like artificial intelligence, machine learning, or after a few months, you may want it to do big data advanced speciality. Look for new cloud and big data opportunities, but first you need to do some of these basic certifications, do some hands-on practice. AWS and Azure both have free subscription for learning. Do some simple projects on your own. If possible, do some freelance and to be very clear, you don't have to do all of them. Even if you do one or two, 
it should be okay as long as you're comfortable getting into cloud with that i wanted to thank you for watching my videos and in my next video i will be covering part three of this series where i will be going over big data specific products and technologies you can learn things like hive spark python so if you have time join me in my next video thank you bye now